Hey guys, welcome to um, Through the Bible, verse by verse. This is a plain and simple study through the entire Bible, book by book, chapter by chapter, and verse by verse. We're currently in the book of, Gen um, book of Genesis, and we're going to go all the way through the book of Revelations, which is going to be, of course, a pretty long journey. Um, and one other thing I always want to keep us keep on our mind, I am taking a slow crawl through the first 11 chapters of Genesis. I won't spend that much time on other chapters. But these first 11 chapters are so um, unpacked for that. There's a lot of unpack there. There's a lot of beginnings. And this is why I'm taking the time to deal with that. We are in chapter 2. And um, I want to talk about the consequences of sin today. We've been talking about sin, what is sin, sort of defining sin from God's perspective. In other words, what does God think about sin? It's one thing when man thinks about sin, but what does God think about sin? Now, um, as we've been studying God, the, the, chapter 2 here is God preparing man for the garden, preparing man for what his plan and purpose um, um, is there for. And one of the, what's interesting is, let's read it again. So, um, in verse number 15, he says, The Lord God took the man and placed him in the garden of Eden to work it and to watch over it. And remember, I, we said when we, a, while, a few studies ago, the term work it doesn't mean the strenuous labor that we go through. But then he says to watch over it. Um, what, what is interesting about this, though, that notice even in the garden here, even before sin, even when we could think that everything is going to be good and pleasure, pleasurable, and it is, notice there is a work, a labor that God had planned for man. In other words, he wasn't just to sit around and enjoy pleasures. Later on, we're going to see that that's always bad. Many nations have fallen for that very reason. Um, so verse 16 says, And the Lord God commanded the man, You are free to eat from any tree of the garden, but you must not eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. For on the day that you eat from it, you will certainly die. Now I'm going to talk about this term death here because this is very interesting because this is the consequences of sin. This is what this, this is what sin produces, and um, he he tells the man he may eat any of the tree. I mean, from any tree of the garden, but the one tree of good and evil he must not eat of it. Um, now the last few set the last few sessions we've been you know the last few studies we've been talking about what sin is. How God defines sin, um, but notice He says, um, "What would happen to Adam when he sinned?" And just keep in mind, all of this is simply over eating a tree, eating from a tree, not blaspheming God, not worshiping a beast, worshiping, you know, any bushes and things like that, but it's eating from a tree. And that is because all sin is detestable to God. What he does tell Adam here is, right from the beginning, this is my command. I'm telling you, do not eat from the tree of good and evil. And notice this term, on the day that you eat from it, you will die. 
Okay, so what, is, what does he mean by die? We, we, we certainly know what death means. We, I believe everyone, certainly at some point, will come to know what death means. I think certainly we will know, right? We will go to some kind of funeral. We, will, we see death all the time on TV, whether we understand its fullness or not, but we certainly see death on TV. We certainly... And certainly, in our lives, we are going to experience death, right? Friends or loved one. And certainly, we ourselves are going to die. But what does he mean by what? What does God mean by death here? What does he mean by death? He says, now, now, now look at this again. But you, and this verse seventeen again. But you must not eat. From the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, for on the day you eat from it. Now, notice what he says right there. On the day that you eat from it, you will certainly die. Now, what we're going to notice is in, in chapter 3, and then moving on probably to chapter 5, is that Adam does not die. Adam lives 930 years. So what does God mean here? Right? In other words, God's not a liar. And certainly God is not wrong. Adam will eat from the tree. And yes, he will die. So we have to understand the term death or die or death. So the word death, as it is used in the Bible... There are three kinds of death, okay? Three kinds of death. Um, let me start with the, the last death because we're not going to spend too much time on it. Um, but the we can call this the eternal death, okay? But let me first say this. Death itself, so there are three kinds of death, but death itself means separation. Okay, so separation, that's what death means, separation. We might even say alienation. So we can say separation from, okay, so first it means separation, then we can say separation from, right? So separation from what? So there is what's called spiritual death. I'm going to come back to that. And then there is physical separation or death and then there is eternal death. Now, I'm going to start with that one because we're not going to spend too much time on it. But the spiritual death also known in the book of Revelation as the second death or the second resurrection um, that the um, um, uh, it means to be eternally separated from God. Eternally separated from God. That's what that last death means. When we talk about going to hell, when we talk about all of that, it means to go to hell. Now, the second one is the physical death, meaning to be separated. And, and so let me go back to the first one, and I'll come back to these two. When God says to Adam here, on the day that you eat from this tree, on the, the day that you sin against me, you will die. He is talking about a spiritual death or a spiritual separation, meaning to be separated from God. Now, what is separated from God? <clears throat> Man is a spirit. He has a soul, and he lived in a body. Now, remember we talked about this when, when God formed man from the death, dust. He formed man from the dust of the body, and he breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. We said the, the breath of life. Um, the, 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 the breath of, of, I'm sorry, the breath of life is his, what was his spirit? So that man is a spirit. He has a soul. His soul is 
what makes man uniquely him, his intellect or mind, his emotions, his desires, and his will. Okay? And then man lives in a body. Now, as God has created human beings, as God has created mankind or human beings, man is spirit, soul, and body. Um, so, um, our physical bodies, and Adam was a physical man. We, we know that because his body was formed from the dust of the ground. Um, <clears throat> so, the death that God is referring to here is Adam's spirit and soul. Now, get this. Actually, we can even say his body. The, the term here, again, that on the day that you eat of the fruit of the tree, you will die, meaning then man himself will be separated from God. Man himself will be separated from God or alienated from the life of God. Man will be alienated from the life of God. Separated or alienated from the life of God. Think of a plant or a tree, right? You think of a tree. So you have the trunk of the tree that comes out of the ground and then all of the branches connects to the, tr to the trunk. Uh, the leaves and the fruit uh, grow out of the branches. Now, let's say if you break one of the branches off, what are you doing? You are alienating that branch from its life source. Okay, you're alienating the, the, the branch from the life source. All right, so understand that. So if I take a branch and I break it off from, I, I'm separating it from its life source. It's like that branch up until that time, that branch has been surviving, existing, and living from the trunk water life right when I break that branch off what am I doing I'm alienating I'm alienating that branch from his life source I am no longer or I should say that branch is no longer receiving supplements nutrients water life okay so when God commands Adam here on the day that you eat of this tree you will be you will die he is saying you will separate you will be alienated from me you will be alienated from me man will be alienated or separated from God's life. That's what he is referring to right here. Okay? And that is the death that is going to happen with Adam. That, that not only not only is death um, Adam will die but remember all of creation will be separated all of creation will be separated from God's life. Now, in this particular case here, he's referring to Adam. Now, we'll get to the creation itself, but that's what he means when he says death here, spiritual death. Now, what's interesting is to know good and evil, Adam doesn't know that yet. All Adam knows is life with God experiences with God. That's all he knows. He doesn't know what it's going to be like. Now, on the other hand, 
we all humans after Eve, all humans, right? All we know is death. We do not know God. We don't know God. So Adam really is the only person, Adam and Eve is the only person who actually experience that separation from God. We, we came into the world already separated from the life of God. But Adam is the only person who will actually know. He will know what it's like to live apart from God. He, he, and, and, and so that's, that, that, that's, to me, is one of the sad things about Adam. Okay? The sad things about Adam right here um, is that um, he will not, he will know what it's like to experience the joy and the eternal blessedness of living with God. He will know that and he's going to lose that. He's going to lose that. So, <clears throat> but that is what spiritual death is. Now, of course, Adam will then learn physical death. Okay? Adam will learn physical death. And that would be his spirit and his soul separating from his body. And we all know that. Now, remember, God says to Adam, let's read it again. Um, verse 17 again, but you must not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil for on the day you eat from it, you will certainly die. So what does he mean by day? He will, he will, his spirit, right? His entire being will be completely separated from God. Okay. Completely separated from God. But Adam lived 930 years after this. He lived a total of 930 years. Right? Okay. So then he physically died, which means his spirit and his soul separated from our bodies. And that's what we, we experience that death. We know what that death means. We know that when we die and we go to a funeral, we're looking at a body. We know that no one is home because our spirit and soul have separated from our bodies. Now, the death that, of course, God is commanding Adam not to do is the spiritual death. That is the most important one. You cannot have a physical death unless you have a I'm sorry, you cannot have a physical death unless you have a spiritual death. So right here we see God, before he kind of releases man, Adam into the, the universe, he gives them his command and tells them what not to do. That, of course, we know, sadly, Adam will do it. But that is spiritual death. The consequences of sin. All right, and we'll get more into that in uh, chapter 3. And we're going to kind of see the the horrors of it <laughs> um, but I right. all right guys um, we'll pick it up in our next study and we're going to get into guess what God's plan for the family not good for man to be alone all right guys I will see you in the next study all right.